Next up is legendary attorney Tony Serra. Tony is San Francisco's charismatic, counterculture, radical lawyer. He's most famous for being one of the top 10 criminal defense attorneys of all time. I was able to catch up with him and talk with him at his office about his life, his legacy, and his new book, Lust for Justice. You're going to love this interview. I was a philosophy major at Stanford with a minor in English mm -hmm. uh, lit. I had some delusions, again, kind of romantic fallacy, that I would go to New York. So I was going to go to New York and become a mafia lawyer, is what my romantic fallacy was. And um, then came the 60s, and, uh -huh. you know, I was living close to, to the hate, and so I got immersed in that lifestyle and all of the experimental, you know, ways of life or various... Uh, ideologies and um, I obviously gave up the idea of going to New York and, and then the 60s blossom I became what they call a radical lawyer Berkeley mm -hmm. and SF State were going all of the various groups you know the Black Panthers right. White Panthers SLA <laughs> New World Liberation Front on uh, goes on and on but I, I represented all of them to varying degrees and you know, immerse myself in uh, even, you know, as a young lawyer, mostly murder trials and political trials, and did them mostly pro bono, lived very out of pocket, you know, mm -hmm. took a vow, informal vow of poverty, uh, you know, became kind of a hippie type, uh, did a lot of the uh, psychedelics and a lot of the, you know, following the various bands that were being created, you know, Santana yeah. and Jefferson. Uh, Starship. Uh, it, it was the airplane before. Right, right. <laughs> and then, yeah, and the dead, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I don't know, you know, that that's how it all started. No, I didn't think I would be a lawyer. And then I thought I would, uh, you know, be a different kind of a lawyer. And then, it, you know, the San Francisco was kind of the nucleus of an awful lot of change and reform and living experimentation. It was fabulous to be here. Yeah, well, now, and did you grow up in California? Before no, you went yes, to Stanford, I, I, I'm a native San Franciscan, one okay. of those few. And, and uh, this is what the indigenous uh, species, you know, looks like. An acting class that, that teach the concept, well, it's just, you know, the term vibe. Yeah. But, but it's like an acronym for voice, intellect, body, and emotion. And so you all, can experience the, the person. It, I mean, that's your four basic levels of communication. Yeah. The voice, the intellect, the body, and the emotional content of it then. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, when you, you can use one of them. Or you can use the multitude, yeah. you know, and, and or you can instinctually use the multitude without right. even knowing you're doing it, yeah. or it becomes that. It becomes instinct rather than premeditation. Marijuana. Obama was told, "Oh, if they're legal, we're not going to touch them." That just turned out to be a, a, a terrible lie. They've gone after the dispensaries under Obama more zealously than they did previously, and the U.S. attorneys that he has placed in, you know. The new U.S. attorneys in various districts, they're pledged to, to go after uh, marijuana offenders, yeah. the growers, and, uh, and the medicinal, you know, um, uh, entities that exist in the various states. So it, it's almost like it's the miner's canary in terms of how free our culture is and how honest our culture is right. and law uh, enforcement priorities. Uh, and so, you know, if marijuana is not liberated, if it is not taken out of Schedule One, if it is continued to be prosecuted, our liberties die, man. Our freedoms shrink. So, well, it, so that's what you're saying is that the feds, it, it, the argument that the precedents that it was never illegal until the, sometime in the 20s. So, for 150 years of our country's heritage and history, it was a free George Washington free grew hemp. I mean, right. we have all again, these stories. The Constitution's written on it, so they're saying even though this is the case, it's still, we're not going to say that has any legal merit or whatsoever. Yeah, and, and they know differently. It's not merely putting your head in the sand. You know, it's conscious deceit. That's from my perspective. Mm -hmm. A horrible, terrible thing. But we learned that government, you know, lies to us. The Obama lied to us. 
Obama should give back the Nobel Peace Prize. It was all political rhetoric. It was all bullshit. You know, and from my perspective, the Republicans are more honest. They say, we're greedy, we're capitalistic, we want to exploit you, we don't want to pay tax, we want you to pay tax, you know, we want control. But they say it, they're transparent. And they don't say it the way I said it, but they say it in an obvious fashion, right. what they stand for and what their principles are. Obama promised us, you know, reform and change, and the whole left of the country, you know, felt enthusiastic. We have, you know, a new leader, a new way of life, you know, in terms of political reality. And no, man, he was just spitting. He was just bullshitting like every other politician. It's been worse under him than it was under Clinton, you know, and, and sometime or in some features, the Republicans. So um, I have a very cynical kind of uh, uh, negative view toward American politics. A two party system can't mm. work, you know, they're compromised. By the time you make it to the top of your party and make it to a variety of elections, you're compromised. You know, I don't know what the answer is to have non, you know, political people run like the wrestler up in wherever that is. Jesse Ventura. Yeah, yeah. That maybe, you know, that's a better way to go. Non-politicals, at least they, they don't come in with the baggage, so to speak, of, of you know, the, the ones who have funded them and the ones who have supported them. There's no payback system, you know. But um, I told you earlier, I don't have formula for utopia. I only, uh, I, I have the small role where I, uh, you know, support the antithesis. Whatever opposes, whatever rejects, you know, whatever is against the main theme. Because in the market place of ideas, you know, we need, in terms of evolution, to consider the, the new idea, the innovative idea, the creative thought, you know, the new way, a reform path. Be your, your legacy, Tony. What do, you, what do you want to be remembered by? I want to be remembered as the lawyer took most acid in the history of law and, you know, still turned out to be a workaholic, seven day a week, you know, semantic warrior.